Solemn. Action. Dear Taiwan, it's been a while since I last saw you, and 23 long years since I officially left you. I've adapted to my new home and to my new American identity, but I've never been able to shake the feeling that I'm leaving something behind. And now I'm back, revisiting all your places and people, indulging in your delicious cuisine, learning new things about you that I didn't know, and maybe even rediscovering pieces of who I once was. He's so cute, huh? <laughs> Cheers! We're at our local morning market and when we lived in Taiwan, my family and I used to come here a couple times a week to buy produce and meats and other foods. And my grandmother still comes here. She's been coming here for decades. And a lot of Taiwanese in big cities now will shop in modern supermarkets, but traditional markets like these are still a fixture of everyday life. My parents and I would frequent the same fish vendor every time we came to the market and I don't know if she's here anymore, but I have really vivid memories as a child of the fish still being alive and jumped in and her just like hitting it down. Say <laughs> YouTube. Say YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try this local snack and it's called a run bing and it's essentially like a burrito filled with vegetables and meat and it's wrapped in this really thin crepe. I think it's made out of rice. It's like a dollar thirty US. Alright, let's try this baby. so soft on the outside and then there's this really interesting crunch on the inside. It tastes like fried crisp peanuts and the vegetables are really delicious and savory and it's got some sweetness to it. It's really good. Hello! Hey! <laughs> bye bye! It's so nostalgic to be back here. My family had our set vendors that we would visit every single time we shopped here. My dad used to buy me toys here. It's just really nice to come back and visit 23 long years later. When I first moved to the U.S., I was 10 years old and I was really focused on integrating and adapting into American culture and society. So I quickly shed my Taiwanese side in an effort to fit in. So then once I entered my 20s, I began to yearn for my Taiwanese side and culture and I began to really miss it. And one of the core ways I was able to rediscover that side of myself was through food. So I became really passionate about seeking out Taiwanese food and sharing Taiwanese food with my friends and family. And my consistent favorite dish over the years has always been beef noodle soup. It's that one dish that always fills me with nostalgia. And right now we're at the beef noodle soup stall that's around the corner from my apartment. I've been coming here since I was probably around five years old. And they're still here and family owned. A very nice couple runs the place. Beef noodle soup is really ubiquitous in Taiwan. It's one of the country's national dishes. You can find little stalls like this pretty much on every corner. And look at how absolutely 
delicious this looks. Beef shank is slow cooked in a broth with fermented bean paste and aromatic spices like star anise and cinnamon. And the final result is this absolutely gorgeous bowl of noodles. And voila. so savory and delicious, rich, meaty. And for me, it's so nostalgic. It just brings me right back to when I was a kid. My mom is the only one in her family that ventured abroad. So everyone is still here. My aunts and uncles, my cousins, their children. My grandmother is now 84 years old living in the same house she's been in for decades. It's the center of gravity for my family, the place where I spent every holiday as a child and countless hours playing with my cousins. Everybody meet my grandma. This is Amma. She's 84. Still looks very young. <laughs> and we're singing karaoke together at home, which is like a big thing to do in Taiwan. <laughs> How'd I do? Being back here feels both familiar and unfamiliar. Everything has changed so much, yet somehow, not at all. One minute. Which, where were you guys just now? We're at the elementary school where I attended first to fourth grade and it was a really interesting experience because it's a fully Taiwanese public school and I was the only foreigner and therefore really stood out and was very different. But I had a really amazing early education here and I'm really excited to be back and to show you around. Taiwanese education system is really different from the Western education system. In general, Taiwanese culture is much more hierarchical and there's a huge focus on education and traditionality. So starting from a young age, school curriculums are already really rigorous and demand a lot of your time. And that only becomes more and more true as you enter high school and college. And in the classroom, teachers command absolute control and students are taught to be obedient and to have a healthy fear of breaking the rules. So from the Western perspective, you see something like the Beijing Olympics, and it's hard to imagine how they pulled off a performance of such synchronicity across such a large scale. But then you come see an Asian education system, and it becomes clear just how they did that. <laughs> So yeah, I used to be just like one of these kids here <laughs> in my little uniform. <laughs> it's recess now, so all the kids are out playing. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so we have a little guide who's going to bring us to find my old fourth grade teacher right now. <laughs> he still works here, which is really nice. Hello. Hi. We're with my fourth grade teacher. So I studied in his classroom all fourth grade and he still works here, which is really cool. Okay. Very good. Uh, uh, so he's been working for a few years. 20 years. 20 years. Wow. Yeah, because it's probably 1999. Yeah, so it was his first year teaching. He's been at the school for 20 years now, but we were his first class. It was his first year working here. <laughs> Though I only have good things to say about my early education in Taiwan, I feel grateful to have transitioned to the American school system in fourth grade as I did. In Taiwan, education is rigorous and all-consuming. 
After primary school, your entire life becomes about achieving high grades and test scores, and students dedicate countless hours to studying. It's an immense amount of pressure. Yet, revisiting my elementary school leaves me wondering, what would my life have been like if I had completed my schooling in Taiwan? How different would I be today? I can only guess. Buddhism is one of Taiwan's main religions, and ornate temples of all sizes can be found everywhere. They add a pop of color between drab gray concrete buildings. Stand alone in the middle of green rice fields and forests, and balance precariously on the edge of cliffs. This one is located just 10 minutes away from my grandmother's house, and is the perfect example of how religion and everyday life are intermingled. Most temples in Taiwan are Buddhist and Taoist hybrid, and this is the case for this one. But the main god here is a Taoist god called Yu Huang Shangbi. But you also have Buddhist gods being represented here as well. Tai Shen is a mythological figure in Chinese folk religion and Taoism. And there are many more deities that help with all manners of problems and desires. So if you want a child, you come here and pray to Zhu Shen Yang Yang. So this is the deity of education. So you come and leave uh, your intentions for what school you want to get into and you pray for it. And then if you get into that school, you come back and thank Wen Cheng. <laughs> Little did we know that we chose to visit the temple on a very special day of festivities, including an elaborate parade, prayers, and a mystical ritual involving a possession and a chair of nails. The session is about to begin and there's going to be a shifu who's going to sit on this chair with spikes and he is said to be the representative of the god, um, basically the embodiment of the god himself. And he'll sit on the chair through the extent of the procession, so four to five hours, which is really wild. so unexpected. We walked into the temple expecting to make a video about the architecture and instead stumbled upon a really, really elaborate Taoist procession. And I think what was really cool about experiencing that for me is that Taiwan is such a modern and developed country, and yet it's clearly still so steeped in culture and tradition. And it's just a really cool thing to witness and be a part of. Tonight we've come to Shilling Night Market to try some of Taiwan's famous cuisine and street food. 
and this is one of the most popular night markets in all of Taiwan and there should be a huge variety of deliciousness here. We're with my cousin, this is Chao Chen, and we're in line at Shilin Ye Shi, Shilin Night Market for some stinky tofu or chou tofu. Chao Chen, do you like chou tofu? I like it. Do you like chou? No. Do you like it? It's very sweet. Ah, okay. It has a very potent smell and it's something that's really distinctive about Taiwan. Walk around for any distance and you'll definitely smell it at some point. But it's really delicious. Like as Taiwanese people, we're really used to it. We don't think it smells bad. We think it's delicious. But for foreigners coming in, they might think differently because they're not quite so used to it as we are. Okay, it's time, huh? Oh God. <laughs> he thinks it smells really good, babe. What do you think? It smells horrible. <laughs> Should I eat it or not? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mm. This one doesn't taste like nothing. It's very soft and spongy and it's pretty good. Wow. But that's like not normal because I've tried like five or six times and I hate it every single time. First time I was able to eat it without spitting it out. <laughs> We unintentionally ended up at a restaurant that was featured in the Netflix show Street Food Asia and we saw a big line decide to stand in it and by talking to the people who worked here found out that it was featured in the show and their specialty is an oyster omelet. The omelet is made with egg, of course, and big juicy oysters, and a really delicious sauce on top. Mm. So delicious. The oysters are savory and juicy. The sauce adds a little bit of sweetness. And what makes the omelet really different is the sweet potato starch that's added in. It gives it this really gooey, soft texture. Delicious. It's nice. Say hi, mommy. Thank you, Taiwan, for the cherished memories and for the chance to make new ones, for letting me retrace the steps of my childhood, eat the foods I love and miss, reconnect with family. You are a part of me always, even though I've been away. I promise I won't leave you for so long next time. Can I see your six pack? No, thank you. That has one that's almost buried in fat. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? <laughs>